I'm not vaping. This is a this is a USB that I'm just fidgeting with. <laughs> that you somehow think is a better justification. <laughs> not playing my douche flute. I'm just being weird. I'm not vaping. I just have an oral fixation that I can't get over. <laughs> Gone real big. <laughs> okay. Gone real big. I'll screenshot it. We'll post it. I'll have a Photoshop contest. <laughs> My mouth is so little. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. A lot of people are into that. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Move along now. Oh, beer can in Welcome to a Booze and Spirits Podcast. It's like a drink with death. Or just drinking yourself to death, because that's about where we're at with today. <laughs> hey everybody, it's a one year anniversary. What the fuck? Of the Booze and Spirits. Well, haven't we got longer than that? Our first recording session was more than a year, but our first episode came out on October 30th. Oh, okay. This one will come out on October 29th, so it's not quite yeah. So well, what I was thinking was in my brain, our April Fool's Day episode was our Halloween episode. And you still thought it was more than you? Because we used our spooky voices. That's right. And I was like, well, we recorded a lot before that, so we must be like seven years into this. Nope, just feels like it. Just feel like it. Welcome to year eight of the pandemic. Oh, I, my derp is back. Well... Against uh, our better judgments, we decided that this episode, since it being the one-year anniversary, would be the topic that I most try to avoid. He says we decided. You didn't disagree. You didn't come to the table with an alternative. In nice. fact, you, if I remember right, you specifically tried to shirk the uh, responsibility of coming up with the idea for this episode. I know. So that's why I couldn't really argue about it, because I was like, <laughs> not it. Okay, you know what? I'm sitting in a room full of rose quartz, black tourmaline, and a lot of herbs. You feeling okay, then? <gasps> Mel Johnson's Mel! here! Hey, it's Mel! Hi, Mel! Happy to be here. Are you I, recording? Because we just started. I I just hit the record button. Awesome. Yeah. Because we Oh my what? god, I'm using a different microphone. I'm using the microphone embedded in my camera thing. Yep. And it looks like I'm getting stereo sound. Hey, cool. That's now available in stereo. Crazy business. My expensive <laughs> microphone doesn't do this, and my on clearance camera does. <laughs> I, I, and right. I was thinking about, oh yeah, we need to bring about why Mel's not here, but now Mel's here, so I guess we don't have to bring about why Mel's not here. Oh, thanks. So I should probably point out, if you can even hear me, that my internet connection has been unstable all day. So <laughs> this might be for not. I don't Fun. know. Fun. Yay. Yay for huge unmitigated disasters. God damn it. Everything keeps cutting out. It's breaking my heart. I can hear you fine. Really? I can hear Mel fine. Can you hear Mel fine? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hear Nick better, but I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear Theo? And his breathing She's heavy. having trouble hearing us, but... I can hear her fine. Yeah, it keeps cutting out. As a matter of fact, for the last, like, 30 seconds, it told me the connection was lost and it was rejoining the meeting. I don't know. <laughs> Do the best we can with what we have and fuck the rest of it. You, you just chime in with non-sequiturs every once in a while. If you want to go grab a deck of Cards Against Humanity and just, like, you know, kind of pull one out every once in a while, that'll probably just fit right in. Well, goddamn Jasmine has my entire set. <laughs> I have a really large set. Do you just want me to hold them up and you can read them periodically? That's that's the ticket. I'm trying to figure out where Sean put the cards against you. God damn, she does not fuck around. I just have the bigger blacker box. Oh, yeah, she's got a ridiculous. It's a pretty one. <laughs> like, to the point where it's no longer playable, she has so many. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I hit that spot, like, years ago. And right? And the more like, I added, it just, yeah. Yeah, it just got complicated as you keep adding. Bees? Bees? Stranger danger! 
Stranger Be Danger. Oh, wait! Cue the music! Demonic Possession! That was straight a random pull, by the way. Do you want me to do a tarot reading with Cards Against Humanity cards? Because I think we can make this happen. <laughs> that would be the best use for Cards Against Humanity cards. Well, we were just about to discuss that this episode's topic is rather vaguely, as many of our topics are, about the, what do we want to call them, paranormal nasties, or... Shit we don't bring up because we don't want it to come hang out with us? Well, that's pretty much why I try to avoid it. Yeah, yeah, this is the Defense Against the Dark Arts class, is what this one is kind of turning into. And it's particularly scary because I haven't got any notes. Katie didn't get any notes. I figured we would just round table and say, if I was really smart, I had this thought a couple days ago. If I was really smart, I would have gotten, like, some other paranormal podcasters and, like, you know, some psychics or whatever, and we could have just, like, you know, had a big roundtable discussion with all of you know, them. But I didn't think about that in a time that I would have given them any of them enough time to prepare for such We a should have, uh, we should have got the East Spooky Tales girls to, to talk about, uh, what are they, Duendes? Oh, they love Duendes. We'll phone them in. They'll be stoked. <laughs> we'll just send them, like, blank emails. That just have Duende videos in it, ask them to record their responses. Well, and that was the evolution of my, oh, we should have had a roundtable discussion. That was also that, like, for future episodes, maybe we should just send email in- invites when we're recording, just, like, random people in our email list, and see who shows up. That would be kind of fun. So, like, the various contractors and, like, vendors <laughs> that are in my email list? Yeah, fuck around, who cares? Or maybe strangers, maybe people who don't know, maybe that'd be a better excuse. Like chat roulette? Exactly. Like, we're going to see dicks. I don't need to see that. <laughs> I live in a house with a toddler and an army vet and a dog and a boy cat. I don't need to see any more dicks. That's all I see all day. But do you have any spectral dicks? Every time I yawn. I feel like Mel didn't think there was an answer coming for that. <laughs> <laughs> Always be prepared for a ghost dick. Why you cover your mouth when you yawn? <laughs> There's a t-shirt right there. I think that that one's been around for a while, hasn't it? The every time you yawn, it goes stick in your mouth. I feel like it has. <laughs> Have we sold any ghost douche shirts? Because I really I, like. No, I just. I really like that myself. concept. I feel like we should just send them to various people. Can I send one to Holly Madison? I don't care. Go ahead. Figure out her address. Does she have a fan PO box? I'm I'm sure she does. Or you know, management. I can send shit to. Ghost douching. Ghost douching. Can Mel hear us? She looks confused. What? What? Huh? What? Shit. This is why I suggested she just mm-hmm. inserts mm-hmm. an unsequitur. I, I'm hearing, like, beeps and bloops at this point. <laughs> I'm going to try turning off my camera, see if maybe that helps. Oh, okay. Camera. Yeah, I guess you could try that. And she's not going to be able to see the cards I hold up. I, I got to try something, because seriously, like, I have no idea what's going on. I think you asked me about t-shirts and... Yeah, that was something. And then... My answer is... Of course. <laughs> Always agree. Always agree. Being a motherfucking sorcerer. Sip, 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 sip. Mel is haunted by spirits with bad email. Dude! Also, oh my also god. known as the Douglas County Infrastructure. Fuck around. I have a goddamn fiber connection, and this thing is so unstable. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry, it probably caught that from me. I'm pretty unstable. Did you infect the entire Douglas County fiber infrastructure? I don't want to talk about it. It was a weird name. She's an awful lot of dicks. But were they spectral dicks? Well, yeah. I'm not going to touch regular Douglas County dicks. (laughs) Word. (laughs) I feel like your audio is more up to speed now. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm I'm very happy to hear that because... And, and actually, it's been a little better for me on this end. So this this might actually work. You can't see the horror in my face when you mention Douglas County dicks, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> so, um, yeah, how we how we gonna do this, yo? Well, I guess we should probably start at the beginning. Um, you know, and I keep bringing up that I try not to talk about this subject, and a lot of the reason for that is is because this is, we're talking about, and this episode is going to get heavy into, like, metaphysics and psychic phenomena and uh, probably a lot of magic, too. So it's going to get a little little esoteric, (laughs) more so than our normal episodes. 
Uh, and one of the problem with most of the um, dark entities that one may come across in paranormal circles is that, and, and this kind of applies just to all paranormal phenomena, not just dark entities, is... Wait! Wait! Stop! What? Should there be, like, introductions and shit? Because it sounds like we're getting into content. Oh, we started, we Yeah, we you were... came in while we were, after we did that. I yeah. mean, we didn't... Oh! I guess we didn't say, I'm Nick, and I'm Kate, and this is Theo, and he's a derp, but... Derp, derp. I guess we did it, did we? We did the, the other interrent, interventions and... We introduced Mel, so, you know, yeah. we introduced ourselves. That's the important part. <laughs> they don't know who we are by this point in time. Why the fuck are they here? Because nobody's randomly listening to us at this point. Yeah, we, we'd already started the show, and we were about to get into the meat of the subject when you chimed in. Well, there you go, and now I've derailed you, and try to start back up. It's so hard to derail us, so... <laughs> <laughs> right? Off you go. Just trying to make up a good derailment joke, but I couldn't come up with one. Story of my life. We haven't had a good train disaster. Oh, no, we had a train disaster in uh, Oklahoma, it was... Well, oh I God. just, uh, I sent you that list of haunted places in Southern Oregon because I didn't know about some of them, so I'm going to go check out Tunnel 13 in Ashland. Last train robbery of the Wild West. Okay. That was my story. <laughs> no one, no one participated. It's fine. It's fine. I don't have feelings. So, before the, uh, the massive derailment happened, what I was going to say was the, um, big problem with paranormal phenomenon as a whole is that the more you believe in it, the more you see of it. Um, a lot of people call this the uh, staring into the abyss and the abyss stares back effect. Yeah, but don't you feel like that's just a thing in general? Like, like I never knew how many mattresses were for sale until I needed a mattress, and then I saw mattress ads everywhere. That kind yeah, of thing. yeah. Could be. I mean, yeah, I mean, there is, because there, there's evidence out there to show that our brains are actually better at filtering information than they are at gathering it. <laughs> so, so everything you see and hear and feel is going through a series of filters where your brain goes, is this necessary for this person to survive or is this just some bullshit? So uh, there is a big part of people's brains that says, well, I don't need this. I'm not going to pay attention to it. And also I believe, you know, this is just me on a soapbox that we live in it age where people are more concerned about what's happening inside their own mind than what's happening in the world around them. Well, I also like stand firmly behind uh, especially like the paranormal. It's been so taboo for so long that people that's why kids are more sensitive is because they haven't had those filters developed. Exactly. And then there's kids like us where, you know, Grammy would routinely tell me about playing with her little brother after he died and so it never seemed weird to me. Well, I remember finding scary things in our house and, and mom and dad tell me, oh, it's your imagination, go back to sleep, don't worry about it, and I don't know. But then I also know, like, years later, you know, dad saying, oh, yeah, I see shit out of the corner of my eye moving around all the time in this house. Like, well, so so yeah, it's no, like, like, how much of this is just you trying to calm me down? Yeah, no, I, I do, mom and dad have both admitted that shit I was scared of as a kid they were just justifying so I would calm down, but they were living through the same stuff, and it's like... Um, I was messaging you about the hat man the other day to see what you yeah. know, because one of my girlfriends has seen the hat man. And one night she saw the hat man and her like eight year old was sleeping in her room that night. And she said, mommy, or he said, mommy, who's that man? So she just like, oh, no, honey, you're dreaming. There's no one there. And then she <laughs> texts me like, what the fuck is happening? Mel, do you know about the hat man? That's a paranormal threat. Mel, are you alive? I'm 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 back. Um, there was some talk of a hat man, and that's when I started to lose you. Are you are you familiar with the hat man? Uh, was there an episode of Supernatural about the hat man? <laughs> Mel is not familiar with any hat hatted people. So I'm not super familiar with the hat man, but I know it is a phenomenon. Phenomena. Um, basically, like a shadow person that is wearing. It's like typically like a bowler or like fedora e looking hat, right? Oh well I think it's usually like a top hat. Like like I feel like the Baba Duke that movies kind of stole a lot from the Hatman mythos. I, sw- I thought it was a like a bowler hat. Uh, maybe. But maybe my brain well, is combining I, the it thing, with I've, the I've, house on haunted or the haunting of Hill House. 
I've, you know, and I've heard it stated that, I mean, that is the underlying threat is a shadow person, but there's always a very distinct hat on their head. I mean, what do we, how would you define shadow people in general? Because shadow people are already kind of considered a nasty thing to begin with, but I feel like the hat man's always kind of been like an elevated version of that. I mean... I genuinely, like, I haven't researched really what other people think shadow men are. Well, and... <laughs> I just is, can tell you my experience with shadow this men. Leads back, this leads back to the whole me saying, oh, there's going to be a lot of metaphysical and magic discussion here, because another key aspect of that is Katie can tell you what she does for these paranormal threats. I can tell you what I do for these paranormal threats, and they are not going to mesh up, like, more than 5%. Because... Um, <laughs> Because this kind of stuff always ends up being very personal to whoever is involved. Uh, if we have any other, you know, uh, paranormal psychics or magic users that are hearing this podcast, whatever they're coming up with is going to be very different as well, because it's all personal to that individual. So, that preface aside. Well, and like, I mean, that could go back to Nick and I very different about what is actually a perceived, like paranormal threat. Oh yeah, because Katie's okay with all sorts of shit that I went in touch with the tip of all. Not my fault. I've had at least six psychics tell me my one of my spirit guides is a djinn. This is not my fault. Meanwhile, my attitude is, is fuck djinns, get away from this. Mine seems like an okay guy. But also, if I'm perfectly honest, my reaction to most paranormal things is fuck that, get it away from here. And that's, you know, we had I had an experience, it's kind of ironic, that Katie brought up that um, this person's birthday was today, because I didn't realize that. Um, a friend of ours died several months ago, and the morning after she died, I had a, a sleep paralysis. I've never had one. Never, never not once, but I could feel someone pressing down on my legs, and, and in my half-sleep state, I thought it was Kel. You know, in bed with me, but I realized no, she's sleeping parallel to me. She couldn't be perpendicular across my legs like that. Uh, and I and I even said out loud, "That's not you, is it?" And I ended up getting to a fighting position where I'm pushing this thing away. I'm getting it out of the house. I'm throwing everything I have at my disposal at it because I'm just over reactionary to any kind of paranormal threat because of you know, how I grew up as a kid, mostly. But it occurred to me after. And, and at the time, I didn't know this person, this friend of ours, had died. And it occurred to me after the fact that, oh, that could have been our friend, like, looking for someone who's yeah. nearby and sensitive and, you know, wants to communicate. And I feel real bad about that. And I, and I tried to open up to her and, and get her to come back the next day, but I never got <laughs> any response. Come back, uh, I won't throw you out of the house. Like well, that. And, the, and, and that's exactly it. And psychics experience things in different ways. I don't consider myself a full psychic, but the way I experience most spirit activities in my sleep, through my dreams, I don't see stuff or, or hear very much during the day or during the week. Or it's always in my sleep. So that's kind of where I'm most open or receptive. That's also where I do an awful lot of combat with things that I don't want in my house. And that's, at first, was my reaction is, and is this is another thing I don't want in my house. And that's stemming from, you know, being a kid and having horrible things living in my room that were fucking with me, and, and I just don't take chances anymore. It's just my knee-jerk reaction is we're going to fight. I forgot what you were saying before I burst into that monologue. You think I remember what I was saying? You were talking about, oh, we were talking about reactions to different things as threats, because you, you have a spirit, you have a spirit guy that's a gym, whereas okay. I am you know, instantly well, and, fighting one if I come across it. <laughs> and, I mean, I think I have pulled from mom's side of the family We can what I consider, I guess, being ghost bait. Um, well, I think most of our, our psychic metaphysical nuts have come from that side of the family. But I have routinely have, I get, I call them wanderers, where I wake up to someone watching me sleep, or, you know, just... Basically, I'm being watched by something. Different things. And, and mom, mom gets that a lot, too. A lot of and, visitors. And I think a big reason that I respond differently is because I have gotten so accustomed to waking up, acknowledging I'm startled, and being like, am I scared or am I startled? 
because things I don't like to talk about, it's not like I've never had something I am 100% confident as a demon show up. But I've also had like a woman in, I would say, in a 1930s suit show up and show me a bracelet. Like, what the fuck was that about? I have a bracelet that looks like that, but it is costume jewelry from 2002. Like, I, so I, have I fully evaluated what all of these things are? No, but I am much willing to, like, I'm at a point where I'm willing to gauge this is a legitimate evil threat versus this is just something uncomfortable. Was it a pretty bracelet? It was. Yeah. I assume she's just borrowing it and wanted to show you, hey, I got it for a little bit. I'll put it back where I'm done. To be fair, it did go, like, it was missing at that point in time. <laughs> I also firmly See? believe there are borrowers in my house because shit goes missing and then shows back up where I looked for it. And this is pre-toddler. Like, this is my entire life at this point. See, my mom told me most of my life that when she and her best friend first moved out together, and I think it was just like a like a back house to her parents' house that they had a poltergeist and, like, things would fall or whatever all the time and I never really experienced that like you guys said that the paranormal was kind of a an open conversation within your house and it sort of was in mine too and yet I didn't I didn't have a lot of those experiences like I I knew when my grandfather died before anybody told like I didn't know he was dead but I just I woke up with that like something bad has happened. And on September 11th, I woke up, had no idea what was going on. And the first thought in my head was, you know, thousands of voices screaming and suddenly silenced. Like, I well, could just it, feel it. And you connected pretty deeply to uh, New York City when you spent time there, too. And that's, that's a huge sight. I mean, that had to be a huge sight way where that happened of all the people just at once going, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck. Absolutely. And the night before, um, I saw the ad for the Spider-Man movie where they had the mm -hmm. um, the web between the two twin towers and I was like, you know, and it's the night before and I'm like, I thought to myself, I am so lucky that I got to see those in person because uh, who knows when I'll be able to go back to New York or if ever. And then the very next day they were gone. I didn't think that they would be gone. I just think didn't think I'd get the chance to see them again. Well, and I woke up, I remember waking up on September 11th to mom just sitting in silence and sobbing. The news, the news had started. It was like the first plane had crashed and nobody knew it was a terrorist attack at that point in time. And mom is sobbing. She's like, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Like... And then I go into school and got to watch it over and over and over again. And they wonder why my generation is so fucked in the head. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but back to Mel's point about how she grew up in an open household but didn't have much experience. There's also, I mean, the, when I say, you know, when you open yourself up to it, then you're, you're open to it. There, there is also a level of just individuals, you know, having more attunement than others. I, there's, you know, in t half of Discovery Channel's paranormal shows are based on people who, well, I never believed until it happened to me. Like, so that's a thing. Like, you, you know, they, they came up as a skeptic and then suddenly got whammy pretty good. And then suddenly they're a believer. So I guess it goes both ways in that respect. Well, I mean, I think people are going to naturally be predispositioned to have, I guess, for all intents and purposes, we'll use the phrase, a thinner veil around them. Well, I think I brought up to you, Kate, a few weeks ago about where do we draw the line between someone with schizophrenia and someone who's being haunted. Like, you know, well, they... and I've, I've <laughs> always wondered that because I've told you, I've watched, air quotes, crazy people mm -hmm. on the streets arguing with something, and I've seen a shadow, like, that they're <laughs> arguing <laughs> with. And, like, and I do wonder a lot, like, how much mental health, like, there's crossover there because... Well, for one, I know there's been times in my life I've been medicated on and off since puberty. I know I function better medicated. We're just going to leave it at that. But <laughs> there's times that I have been so medicated, I am numb to everything around me. There's times I have had experiences on different medications. There's times that, like, 
I've been not medicated. I've been a lot more receptive. Does that mean I should not be medicated and just become a professional psychic? No. I <laughs> need to be mentally well. You're going to become an open window now. Good luck, fucker. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's the whole thing. And I do very much wonder, especially with schizophrenia, because it's such a hard disease to deal with. I think schizophrenia is real, yes, but how much of yeah. it is real and how much is your brain telling you things? Like, well, and like I said, you know, that's filtration. How much is a creation of the imagination? How much is just the filters not working at full speed? Well, and I have seen a lot of stuff lately, finding a correspondence with ADHD and being on the like autism spectrum and being more sensitive to things. And like you said... Our brain is designed to filter out more than we receive so we can keep track of it. But I know like the ADHD brain, we're all over the place. We're picking up information from six different places at once and trying to put it together. So it makes more sense that with all of those channels open, you're more open to receive things that science has yet to fully explain. Well, and I was... They, there are studies that show as people get older, they pick up information better. So that's why your your cranky old lady neighbor above you is always complaining about the noise. It's not because you're being particularly noisy. It's because she's better at hearing and listening and picking out things than you may be because she's so used to, you know, the 60, 70 years she's spent listening for things. Should we kind of run down some quote-unquote paranormal threats. We touched on shadow men, which um, a lot of my knee-jerk reaction is also just because there's a lot of things on the sliding scale of paranormal threats or entities that are just kind of in the city. So I, it's, it's a matter of me just you know trying to keep things from latching on to me. So a shadow person is kind of in that camp where it's out to absorb energy from living beings. I remember correctly. Yeah. I didn't research shit for this. <laughs> I, I thought I was like here for the to research shit. I thought I was here just for the defense against the dark arts purpose, but oh, that's that's the only part you're going to chime in on. The rest is all up to me. Yeah, I'm super quiet all the time. I'm here for the beer and the bitches. I mean, I go out of my way to not talk about negative entities. Well, I know I don't like too, to, but that's what we're to invite for. them in. But I am going to be honest. I got a text this week. Somebody asking about a negative entity, and I said, do you have a welcome mat in front of your house? And they went, ah, fuck. Because <laughs> you yeah, can that's, invite that's... this shit in. Here's the thing about negative entities. You don't have to wait for a vampire to show up to your front door and say, would you like to come in, sir? They're fucking evil. They're going to take whatever opening they have as, well, that was totally an invitation. They're yep. like frat boys. They're going to like, well, she didn't say no. Yeah, exactly. And, and we are talking about metaphysics here, which it's based solely on the individual and the individual perception and the individual belief. So like Katie says, you know, a welcome mat, if somebody can twist their logic around to get fuzzy enough to pet and go, oh, well, I guess I can just come in here any fucking time I want. That's a possible. Katie does bring up a point. A lot of these things are not even supposed to name because you don't want their attention to you. Shh. I kind of forgot when I said, oh, yeah, let's do the dark art nonsense. I don't know how much of that we actually want to discuss. <laughs> There's a reason that my welcome mat is not a welcome mat. I just have a fucking giant mat with an evil eye on it outside of my front door, so. <laughs> That's a good idea. Do I need a go away rock? Maybe. I got my mom a, a Gandalf thou shall not pass mat. That's a, last year. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be aggressively like you can't be, come in, but just bear in mind, like, you leave a welcome mat out. You leave your front door open to let the breeze in with no screen door. Like, there's just all these little things that can add up to you trying to figure out why this negative entity is attached to you. Th this is a little just kind of basic, basic, basic magic, but uh, the whole idea of magic is this just action with the that's all it is. So basically, anything you do with a purpose qualifies as magic. So yes, a doormat that says "Thou shalt not pass," you know that works. Like I've got my my phone case here. I sticker bomb the back of it, 
it looks like it's just a big elaborate pattern, but I carefully chose which stickers I was going to put here, what their positioning was, why I had them. I, I basically charmed my phone through this whole exploration of decorating my phone case. Hmm. You know, I, there's there's a, a hand with a gun, and I, I carved out the barrel of the gun, so it's actually the camera space. And I put a riffraff sticker here, because those are my kinds of people. Uh, fragile, no, uh, oh, what does that say? Oh, I put a fragile sticker on here to keep it from breaking when it falls. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. You feng shui'd the shit out of it. I did, and actually it, it's, it worked pretty good because now my phone is about to become obsolete. I have a new phone coming tomorrow because this one it's is too from old the, to work. Uh, well, do you want to dive into defense then if we, uh, if we're sketchy about naming names? I mean, so I have heard in recent years, like, we should have prayed to St. Michelle and asked her to come be on the show today. Maybe, maybe. Who okay, Katie's talking about is Michelle Ballinger, who we're both huge fans of. And honestly, that's where I learned most of my uh, defense practices is from books of hers. Do you know who she is, Mel? Did you, were you yep. ever like a paranormal state fan or anything? So Michelle is a paranormal investigator. She is a psychic vampire, so an energy vampire. Um, she's very well educated in all of these things. She's a demonologist. She's written books about it. She does classes. She's just... She's, she's highly respected. Everybody knows, well, not everybody, but most people know who she is. Most of them know that she's legit and she's trustworthy and she's out to help people. And she's been around since well before this was trendy. I'm I'm just a huge fan of hers, but I feel like when she released her A to Z encyclopedia of demons, she was like, not naming them is giving them more power if you're dealing with fear. I'm sure there's more to that argument, but like, if we really weren't supposed to be naming them at all, she would not have released a dictionary of all of them by name. Well, and, and you know, when you got something like a demon involved, a lot of times having its name is uh, a defense. Uh, a lot of things, in, in, uh, you know, if you say, hey, there's a demon bothering me, I need to get rid of it. Well, you can start casting all sorts of charms and spells against a demon. But who knows, you're going to hit the right fucking one. So if you've got a demon's name, you can cast a charm or, or a spell against that demon, and we're right on fucking target. Because, again, we're dealing with belief and intent. So you can nail that one to a fucking post. You know how to go after it. And that was a part of the book was in the forward, she talks about, boy, I wish we would have had a, uh, you know, the from Ghostbusters, they have the Tobin Spirit Guide. Boy, I wish one of those really mm -hmm. existed. So she ended up writing one, uh, uh, collecting all the demon lore she could. Uh, they just released a new book. For the yeah, she updated it, right? I've been meaning to buy a copy, but I have not yet. I have the old one, I haven't got the new one. But also, I learned a lot from her. Which book was that? I the Ghost was, Hunter's Handbook. It's one of my go-tos because although it's specifically about ghost hunting, it gives you a lot about parasitic entities. It gives you a lot about protecting yourself before you're going into a situation. It's I feel like that book is the putting your air supply on on the airplane before you help someone else of, <laughs> of negative entity protection. You know, I, I confuse that one a lot with she had a book about psychic damper. I forget a lot of which tools she discusses in which books, but I think a lot of it kind of, you know, like really back and forth. But yeah, she has a lot of thought exercises, which, you know, in pink was magic. A lot of thought exercises mm -hmm. on shielding and uh, creating psychic tools you can use, refining energy, grounding energy to get it out of your system and, and into the earth where it can't hurt anything. And I'm going to be honest, from some of my times in the past, if that woman had not taught me how to shield via her books, I am not certain I wouldn't have offed myself earlier in the game. I mean, that's as, as her shielding uh, discussions are kind of the principal technique. All of my kids have a shield. I mean, they're not designed the way that she drew them up because they were, you know, they were built by me. They're built with my intent. But all my kids have a shield that I occasionally redouble, reinforce, say, hey, you know, we we got to get this thing spinning again just to, to try to keep it going. And that's because, you know, I'm trying to protect my 
<laughs> it's like, I know from past that, you know, my family attracts this crap. And, you know, and I don't know what level of experience my kids have. Like, Ramsey can help me a lot. That he's, you know, he had a scary dream. Or Rowan told me he had a scary dream. Said, oh, well, what about? Because I want to, you know, I want to know if I can help. And they, well, I don't want to talk about it. So, but then that makes me nervous that they don't want to discuss what it was about. So, you know, here goes dad uh, bracing the shields again, <laughs> just in case. Jeez, I feel like I should do that with Jasmine. I mean, it can't hurt. Like I said, it's it's thought, it's intent, it's an action. You, you're not really going to hurt anything unless you're going out of your way to turn her into a portal or something. You know, I know you said she's in the paranormal. I hope she doesn't. Maybe we should um, find some books for you to give Jasmine for Christmas. You know, I uh, I I was already writing down some of the stuff that you guys were talking about. Cause... Get some Michelle Ballinger books, yeah. Well, and Mel, honestly, like, I've been essentially consulting on child protection from the spiritual for or from the supernatural for years at this point, so if you want to have a non-recorded conversation about it, we can certainly do that. Yeah, uh, yeah I I think I I think my little friend needs that. Like it's I I feel like she's got a friend who really like amps up her anxiety because her friends like constantly saying, Oh, I saw this or I saw that or this happened and every bump in the night is assumed to be something bad. But she's had so much like death and suffering in her life that you know if there's if there's any way to just dispel some of the negative energy around her i think it would be really helpful because like katie said that she really needed those shieldings around herself so during some really tough times and i i really think that that's something jasmine's gonna need i will gladly assist with that I have my side business where I, you know, do house cleansings and help people deal with specific, and like, you, you want a fertility spell, you want a love spell, like, I can help with those things, but like, protection is definitely, and defense is definitely my strong suit, and I end up never making any money because somebody's like, this child, and I'm like, all right, let's fix it, let's go, (laughs) yeah, can I pay, nope, nope, we're just gonna fix it, we're not dealing with this bullshit, I don't have time for that, you can reimburse me for some parts I bought, but not worried about it. For me, I got into my I'm done running and fighting behavior when I was, you know, a late teenager. It was, and that was, you know, years before I read any Michelle Ballinger's stuff. So I didn't have the tools, but I quit being afraid at night. If the monster would come out of the box and I'd punch him well and i don't remember that i mean i remember having nightmares and night terrors and i still have nightmares and night terrors but as like a four and five year old apparently i was coming to mom and crying about my nightmares and i was running from things in my dreams and she was like turn around and tell her you're not taking it and at that point in time the majority of my night terrors stopped because in my dreams i would turn around and be like what what do you want and they would be like never mind and i honestly think especially with like demonic entities if you are going to fight them prior to a possession stage once once an entity have gotten deep enough with its claws into you to possess you or get you very close to that state it's a whole different like story we're dealing with but prior to that if you are like no i'm done i'm not dealing with that and the same with negative entities in your home or whatever like if you stand up to them they're like you know what i don't i don't have the time or the energy so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna back out they they want your fear they want your sadness your terror your depression they want those negative emotions Mm -hmm. and if you just make a point of it i'm not giving that to you Hopefully it will move on. If you've got a household full of people like I do, then you got to worry about them jumping on someone else. So that's, again, why I'm getting aggressive with my defense. But as an individual, you can say, no, you're not welcome here. Fuck off. Well, and, like, the demonic presence that I have felt before, I do feel it, like, you know, hiding occasionally, just checking to see if the walls are down, if 
They're like they'll pass, they'll pass the defense. They're like the fucking velociraptors. They exactly. gotta check the fence. And if the <laughs> fence is down, they're going for it. But if they like peek over and the fence gives them a little zap, they're like, Alright, alright, I'll check back later. They're not gone. Every two or three months I have a dream where I've gotta bend something off because they're testing the defense. Is this a viable place? Oh no, I got a face full of white energy. I should fuck off for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that sounds really exhausting, like a lifetime of having to keep the shields up and... I mean, is it, many, is it any more exhausting than a lifetime of going to work every day? Yeah. <laughs> right? And, 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 and see, and, and that's part of how you how you rationalize it. Like I said, I got shields up on all my kids, and i have it's a mental construct, so I can build it any way I want. My kids' constructs are basically built kind of on the, the principle of a perpetual motion machine. They're always spinning. They're always moving. They've got... I've put openings in them, but the openings are traps. They're purposely traps of white energy that if you try to go through here, you will burn the fuck up. Like, And that's how these things are built in my mind before it's been placed on my kids. And, and like I say, when I go back and I revisit it, and I don't do it all the time. I do it, you know, once every three to six months at the most. And, and I go back into it and I say, you know, all right, well, let's just reconceptualize what this looks like. Have I learned anything? Do I need to put anything else? Maybe I'll put like some kind of Tesla power looking thing on the outside, so it's kind of got a zapping thing. To it. And, and it's it's ridiculous to have this idea that there's this invisible metallic shield with Tesla powers and and light traps all over it floating around my kids. But it's the intent and it's the purpose, and it's not hurting anything. You know, I have a very strong dirty pagan background i've been (laughs) practicing for god over 25 years at this point so a lot of my stuff is i will just like you know set up wards and i only do the shielding if the threat is present so you know we ward the house i'll cleanse the house i will plant lilacs by the doors to keep negative entities like all of these little things that i do just in my day-to-day life that are seem relatively mundane And then, you know, when Nick and I record a podcast and all hell breaks loose behind me while we're talking about (laughs) ghosts, that night I light a white candle and put the shield around the baby. Like, it's not something I'm putting all of my energy into all of the time, but there are are moments all of my energy is directly funneled into it. I'm better now, but, you know, we started doing this. I felt the eyes on my back. My lights above me were flickering. It's kind of waned off a little bit since then. All right. What else do you want to talk about? El Chupacabra? <laughs> El Chupacabra. Fucking, uh, fucking Wendigos and... You don't hear much about Wendigos outside of Full Glory anymore, and I don't know if maybe that's just because not so many people. I, well, you know... Skinwalkers? Skinwalkers you hear about because people are obsessed with them. I don't know. I feel like there's not that many Skinwalkers out there, but people are really good obsessed with them. Uh, skinwalkers being a Native American witch, essentially, that can change forms is the origin of this. I was just trying to think of things we could talk about that weren't demons. Wendigo. Wendigo started out with Native I believe, too. Yeah, Wendigos are also Native American. But it's American. Based, basically linked to uh, people starving in the winter and resorting to cannibalism. You want to talk about tulpas? What, I mean, we got we got options. Tulpas. We all know about tulpas. I mean... Tulpas is a is an easy interlude into uh, fucking Slender Man. So. I don't like Slender Man, but maybe that's just because I. Didn't. You didn't tulpa him. I did not tulpa. I don't tulpa Slender Man. Be like I don't ship some Slender Man. I don't tulpa Slender Man. A uh, tulpa is basically a thought form come to life. Well, it's a uh, Tibetan theory, right? That you have put so much energy into a f- fictional item that it has absorbed all of that energy and is no longer fictional. Chuck- well, that, is Chucky was, a tulpa? What? Is Chucky a tulpa? No. No, that was just the, the soul of criminal that turned into it. It's not a tulpa. <laughs> <laughs> That's the t-shirt we That's need. the t-shirt. It's not a tulpa. <laughs> there was the Joseph experiment in the 70s where a bunch of uh, paranormal researchers I think it was the 70s into the 60s a bunch of paranormal researchers created, you know, a character like you would in a theater or such where they decided who this person was, what their life was like, what kind of things they liked and all this. And they all kind of focused on this individual that they created a whole plot. And 
situation, they started getting responses from a spirit that called itself Joseph that had these same characteristics and personalities that they put together. It's the same phenomena as a tulpa, just uh, without the Tibetan slant. What do you think of Ouija boards? I don't futz with them. Um, I know I know Ouija boards are controversial. Some people say, hey, it's manufactured by Milton Bradley. It's nothing more than a fucking game. Mel, what do you think about Ouija boards? I've never had one work, and probably partially because I am a control freak, so I usually want to try moving it on my own so <laughs> that something happens, but... Like, and she's an Aries? It's so hard to believe. I know. I Maybe it has something to do with I was born within the first week of being Aries. I just, I have this weird, like, I don't know that I believe in it, but I'm also not going to screw with it. That's fair. So I have developed a new theory on, well, a new stance on Ouija's because as a kid, I was like, let's fuck around with this Ouija. And then I got older and I was like, let's stay far away from the Ouija. But now I'm like, yes, a Ouija can be a portal, or spirit board, whatever we want to call it. But I decided as an adult, it's no bigger of a threat than any sort of divination. Like, here's the, here's the thing: spirits and entities can lie. You can, you know, play with a Ouija board, and, it's, and it can identify itself as your grandma, but it can definitely not be your grandma. And just well, and I agree. And but I mean, I feel like that same way with like a pendulum, and you know, like. All of these things can facilitate. I just realized there's a creepy zombie on Nick's shirt. All of these things can facilitate, like the tar man. You're the tar man. So I would not say fuck around with Ouija's, but they serve a purpose. I think it was. I told you I was watching Grave Encounters too, which was really. I mean, it was. It Sounds was, real cheesy. It was very cheesy, but they had a spirit board in that that was laid out like a quirky keyboard, and I was fucking. Since <laughs> by that, <laughs> that was the numeric or the alphanumeric layout it was a qwerty keyboard. It's like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> was that intentionally funny? Do we think? I didn't. See I the don't movie. think it was meant to be. I don't know. I don't. Maybe, maybe it was kind of a tongue in cheek thing. Like the movie wasn't trying to be funny, but like maybe that was just something that like the, the people on the set thought would it be funny if we did a qwerty instead. Like. I mean, they're not wrong. They're not. I mean, they're not wrong, but it pissed me off in the moment. Well, uh, here's the thing, though. I, uh, I think a Ouija is really kind of. I think because you're talking about divination tools, I think that's really. Well, I'm, I guess that depends on the individual. I was going to say, I I think that a, a Ouija is one of the few divination tools that you use that's looking for an outside source. Because if if I'm using a tarot. I'm not expecting a ghost to guide the tarot or, or a runestone. I'm not expecting a ghost to... I'm expecting either something in myself or the universe to guide those. Well, though, but you have to think about if you're expecting the universe to guide you. And this is not, obviously not a solid fact, but, like... What is it, is? Is it your spirit guides that are guiding you through the tarot? Or is it something else? Because, I mean, I feel like... Well, see, I don't, I don't even know that I have spirit guides. I know you, you have a belief in, like, several of your own spirit guides, but I don't even believe that I have any of my own. Nick has no soul. <laughs> is that what that means? This is his first incarnation. He has no soul. I don't believe this is my first incarnation, but I don't know that I have any spirit guides either. I think I may have some protectors, but I don't know that I have any guides. I guess I do have... A couple of guides, but I've never considered them to be spirits. I was considered to be more like cosmic force. Well, but and again, that's like, my own interpretation. That's what we're doing metaphysics. Your own interpretation is all subjective. Hey, fun fact: whatever god you're talking to, it's the same one that other guy's talking to. He just has a different name for it. See, I believe that there's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> I mean, I like if you're. I what? feel like you're Here's talking to spirits. It's all, like, kind of this one thing, hanging out. And yes, it might have some different parts, but, like, the big the big power is all just one thing. Well, and that's a lot because your spirituality is kind of built on the backbone of Wicca. No, Dude. it is not. I, am, I did study Wicca as an adolescent because it was the 90s and that's what was available. But <laughs> Wicca, nothing against Wicca, but Wicca cool. is... I have a religion that came around in the came about in the 1950s. It has a very 
It's very, very, very structured and relatively formal compared to most, like, folk magic, which I identify as, like, an American folk magic practitioner with a heavy leaning on Celtic. Okay, see, and where my outlook is, is I'm in this weird kind of gray area between Taoism and Gnosticism, <laughs> which is completely different from what you're doing. Because cause, uh, one of the main tenements of Gnosticism is that the creation of monotheism was specifically created to trick humans into worshipping something that would destroy them. True. I'm not a big proprietor of monotheism, but do I think the Christians and the Islams are essentially playing, praying to the same same entity? Yes. Oh yeah, I believe that. I, I believe Judeo-Christian Islamic is all kind of funneling its, its energy in the same thing. But also, as you know, someone who leans Gnostic, I also believe that maybe that thing shouldn't have all that power. Maybe that should be spread out a little more. I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> Hence, as a non-Christian in any way, shape, or form, I have worked a lot with the saints over the years. <laughs> Are you learning some stuff now? Dude. Crazy. <laughs> like, I... there, I, I'm, I'm very, very torn because I... I was brought up in with like the very basic Christian beliefs without all the structure. Yeah. And I think at some point I started to believe that maybe there's energies in the world and um, you know, the finite molecules in the universe and they all just sort of like float around from thing to thing. And maybe that connects us, but you know, like, I believe that brain death is it. Like, lights out, no no deities, no afterlife, none of that. So it's hard for me to have these, I don't know, not, I, I, want, I don't want to call them psychic impressions because that's, I don't think it's that, like, powerful, but, you know. Well, if, if you believe there's a connecting energy, then there's, you know, energy travels in waves. So there's a wave that can be picked up on as those energy jumps from source to source, right? Yeah, I just, I have a hard time, I have a hard time reconciling not believing that there is destiny or fate or divine, divinity or any of that with there still being these, you know, energies that interact with each other. And I think you, like you said, you kind of have trouble reconciling these pieces, right? You said I, I do, and I desperately want to believe that, you know, someday I will see the the people and animals that I've lost throughout my life, but I I know that I won't, <laughs> but I want to believe, which and, also and makes think, it a little more difficult. Yeah, and I think that's kind of where pretty much every single individual person is on a spiritual journey, is they have to to figure out what makes sense to them. And like, you know, Katie and I have completely different views. But we've also, you know, have tried to get ourselves to a point where it does make sense. And that's where, you know, someone like you or someone else would have to, to stop and say, okay, what makes sense? And it's not it's not easy. It's not easy to reconcile all of those things floating around in your head and, and what makes sense and what doesn't. Like, like in, in my perspective, I've... I don't want to say I've thrown out science, but I pinpointed what I consider a flaw in science, um, mm -hmm. which you know drives you know people who are very science and materialist driven crazy. Um, and, and my outlook on that is just that human beings, and this is funny because I'm using science to spit on science, is uh, <laughs> and I don't disbelieve in science. I'm, I don't disbelieve in science. I don't want that to get you know. Well, the nice thing about science is. You, science is there to say that this has not been disproven. Nothing we can do can disprove this theory currently, which means it can evolve. Unlike yeah, it can. It, some it, it, religion is like, well, it was in this book that this guy rewrote several thousand years ago and would like me to believe is 18, the original. 18 people wrote this book 4,000 years ago. Somebody yeah. rewrote it 1,200 years ago. And I'm going to go with that version as law. Well, and... Yeah. and Here's, here's where science evolves from, and here's how I look at it. You know, there's a lot of discussion sometimes on what put 
sets humans apart from animals. You know, is it open use of language? There's artistic expression. There's there's been discussions about the fact that we could accurately throw things may have aided in our uh, brain development. I think it's being selfish and manipulative, but that's just me. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a genetic predisposition of uh, <laughs> every genetic being. Um, no, we have the ability to care for somebody who is sick or injured so that they don't die, whereas animals don't have that capacity and they just leave them. Well, nope, they have found that do. in some, 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 some yeah. animals. Yeah. See, uh, uh, you know, uh, so so it only comes down to one of two things. It's either we're not afraid of vacuum cleaners. <laughs> or we're phenomenal pattern finding machines. Like that's what humans are built for is finding patterns. What's can, it mean if I'm afraid of a vacuum cleaner? It means that you're I'm not, but Okay. <laughs> I just... You're an animal. You're not a full person. I don't believe the vacuum cleaner theory. I think you can train an animal not be afraid of vacuum cleaner. I'm talking about pattern recognition. Um Humans are great at finding patterns to the point that, like, we can, you know, we've got the point where you draw something on a piece of paper and you go, hey, look, it's a person. And it's not a person. It's stripes of carbon on a sheet of paper. But you recognize that, oh, well, those shapes look like a person. That's how tuned our brain is to finding pattern. And at its base level, that's what science is. Science is a method for discovering patterns. And... That's phenomenal. It, it, it's, you know, helped us in a lot, a lot, a lot of ways. Science has helping us determine patterns, find patterns, figure out which patterns don't necessarily work because of this, but if we tweak it this way, that's the way that the pattern works. That's what science is kind of built around. But that's on the assumption that everything about the universe works on a pattern, which maybe some things don't work on a pattern. Maybe, you know, psychic phenomena, maybe the spiritual realm, maybe other dimensions don't work on a pattern. Which, you know, which is why science fails those things. I'm not saying science is, is a useless tool. It's extraordinarily useful. But it may not necessarily cover all the bases. But, I mean, just look at the finding of bacteria. Yeah. Like, how long ago did we find bacteria? Relatively, it wasn't that long ago. Like, what, 100, 150 years ago? Uh... Like I don't, 150 I don't know about the actual discovery of bacteria. I always kind of link back to like when we we discovered hand washing like four or five hundred years ago. That's when we discovered that if you wash your hands after you deal with a corpse, maybe the baby is less likely to die when you help it be born. Well, and yeah, like so that's just like my look at the paranormal is we haven't gotten there yet to be able to pinpoint it, to figure out, like to diagnose it, to understand it fully. Yeah. Like, that's my theory. It's like, science evolves, humanity evolves, like, we didn't figure out bacteria was a thing, and that there was, like, we're just now figuring out that there's healthy bacteria in our personal microbiome that affects our mental health. Like, oh, yeah, our that's, stomach, that's, that's, in that's the past brand fucking new. That's in the past couple of decades. Then. So, why is, it, why is it illogical that we're not going to figure out in... 10, 15, 100 years that, oh shit, that ghost thing, that was real. <laughs> that wasn't just a bunch of crazy people making shit up. Now we've talked ourselves in the corner because I'm going to talk to you and try to first. I think we just kept <laughs> building on each other until we didn't know what we were talking about. <laughs> I was told to ramble today. That's oh, okay. I was well, told. I, did, not I, did, I never specifically told you to ramble. You told me you weren't going to look. I didn't specifically we tell you not table. to ramble. You did not. You, you said we were doing a round table. So. And you just. Spinning. I'm spinning. I'm spinning. Spinning around. Spinning around the table. Is that what ramble is? A contraction of round and table? Ramble? Yes. <laughs> With an M in there for the, muster. For apostrophe. The M is for apostrophe. <laughs> for Muppet off monoclonal <laughs> antibodies. Mmm, <laughs> chicken. <laughs> Snacks on snacks on snacks. <laughs> uh, Mel, do you have any questions in the idea in the realm of paranormal threats that maybe Katie and I can dump into? Not in a poop no, fashion. No. <laughs> <laughs> or if, I or if I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really experienced a whole lot of paranormal threats in my own life. Um, yeah, I know. I was just wondering I've if only ever had... Curious about... Um, what do you recommend? 
I, I was just wondering if there's something you were curious about. If you're going to poop on it, that I, I feel that works better for hexing than protection magic. Oh. Poop in its shoes because they're ugly. Wipe your ass with their name. Flush it down the toilet real quick and easy. <laughs> Oh, it's in awesome. action magic. <laughs> Love it. Well, like I said, my experience with Wicca was like in the, you know, mid 90s when that's what was available. And I, there's a couple of points I thought were really great from, from that doctrine of things. And one of those things is the difference between a spell and a prayer. A spell <laughs> is a prayer plus a ritual or a prayer pre- plus an action. So Which can be argued can help focus it because yeah. there's, there's you know, something more involved than just saying, boy, I sure hope the Santa Claus brings me this. Yeah. I'm supposed to do Santa Claus spells? Fuck. Aww. Does Santa Claus count as fame in your house? Or Because you, I know you're trying to keep fame lore out of your house. I'm not trying to keep it out of my household. I'm just not inviting the Tooth Fairy in, and I've yet to figure out an alternative because I don't want him to miss out on essentially the tooth fairy joy of losing a tooth, but I also don't want my child to learn that he should sell his body parts to the fae. You can get one of those wooden um, cases that has a hole for each tooth in it, and then, like, you know, every time he gives you one, you go in there and give him a bell. Gotta catch so a ball. Sell it to mommy. <laughs> <laughs> sell your teeth to mommy. So I, I was going to start talking about lucid dreams. Do it. Well, so I, I've only ever had it happen to me once, and I can see how people would believe that it was, you know, spirits coming to visit them. Um, it was the day before I adopted my boxer Remy, and oh, I had a Remy baby. Oh, I know my Rem Rem. Well, so it gets worse. Um, I had a lucid dream that my dog Angel, who had died six months before just like jumped up on the bed and was gonna go to sleep with me and like I felt her weight on the bed I heard her collar jingle exactly the way that it did before and the whole time like I put my hand out and I was like you are not here this is not happening you are not here like I I just I didn't want to accept that it was happening and I didn't Um, want to allow myself to live in the moment I mean this with like genuine interest uh are you can are you positive you were asleep for this i'm not positive that i was asleep because i felt like i well let me sort of so i i felt a moment of being more awake after i had told myself several times that it wasn't real so i i don't know that i was fully conscious when it was happening well, I mean, I would argue that you're much more apt to have an encounter with any sort of spirit in that small window between awake and asleep. Because yeah. you're I feel like you're more open to to noticing things that you that are are very minute. Like my filters haven't turned on yet. Your filters aren't on. You're not fully asleep. Your brain hasn't, like, done that, like, it's nighttime. I go sleepy yeah. bye-bye. I just, I thought it was just a manifestation of guilt. Like, not that I could have done anything to have Angel still there or anything, but I was getting a new dog and moving on. I mean, my interaction with Angel would be that she would not be, the only reason she would be upset with you getting a dog is that it was not a dog she could we're gonna play say with. play with yeah. <laughs> right I have very little to say on the subject of lucid dreams because I'm very bad at it um, there are you know exercises I've seen people put online and little methods they do to um, you know kind of make lucid dreaming more common you can um, smoke mugwort is, um, I haven't tried it because I'm too tired to deal with lucid dreaming any more than I do on average at this point in my life, but smoking mugwort is supposed to be a good way to enhance your lucid dreaming. My dreams, I'm always in control of myself and my actions, but the only dreams that I would consider to be actually lucid dreams where I realize I'm in a dream state. It's like an invisible timer starts counting down where I have like a minute or two before I'm going to wake up. Like 
every time. Like I realize, oh, this is a dream. I can control anything. Fuck, I'm going to wake up in a minute. I, <laughs> what can I do in a minute with this yeah. dream before I wake up? My lucid dream is always like half lucid. I'm like, oh, I know, I know I'm dreaming. I know I can do what I want. But it's like, you know, you're like learning to walk. Like your body only sort of works. I feel like a toddler. Like, <laughs> it's very frustrating. I have had the uh, instance where my body fell asleep, but my conscience was still awake. That was kind of interesting. Because I realized I was fully awake, but my body was asleep. And I'm sitting there going, Wow, this is really cool. My body's asleep and I'm awake. There's nothing I can really do with this. This is boring yeah. as fuck. <laughs> I guess I'll go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I had that happen when um, I had to, had to do a sleep study to be diagnosed with sleep apnea. Yeah. And I swear that for the first two hours, I never fell asleep. Like, I was sure that I was awake tossing and turning the whole time. But the guy who was there monitoring all of my bodily functions was like, no, you were asleep that whole time. <laughs> and I'm like, that's really weird. Cause I feel like I felt two hours pass in real time. I think I scared the nurse when she did my sleep study. Cause I asked her, I said, Hey, well, anyone's asleep is like, you know, and shit start floating around the room or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> what? Oh, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> Um, I do not have restorative sleep. I have exhausting sleep most of the time. I have incredibly <laughs> vivid dreams. I'm confident I've had past life memories as dreams. I have a lot of nightmares. I can always tell my nightmare is not real life when I cannot get a phone to work. None of the phones work in my dreams. <laughs> you dream in an 80s horror movie? No, I can't dial 911 <laughs> in dreams. I'm always like... Like, my fucking psycho ex will show up, and I'm like, fuck you, I'm calling the cops, and then it just, it just doesn't work. <laughs> Not that I have control issues or anything. I don't think I've ever once realized I was dreaming. See, that's what most people consider to be a lucid dream. When you realize you're in a dreamscape, and once you have that realization, you can control what's going on. That's how I see most people describe lucid dream, which, like I say, I, I've failed at every time it's ever come close. But I still, uh, I do remember, you know, in all my dreams, I always have my own control over my own actions, but I don't have control over the rest of the What does it mean when I know I'm having a lucid dream? My first goal is like, I'm going to go bang that hot, hot celebrity. <laughs> I mean, I haven't had this happen in a while, but. <laughs> Chelsea Clinton? <laughs> you know, oh, I have, yeah. <laughs> if I'm totally honest, I have the same reaction, but. First, I can't think of anyone. I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm in a dream. I can control it. Who should I? Who should I bring into the dream? Fuck, I can't think of anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I, I know the timers running down. I was like, what am I going to do in a minute anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Cuddle. <laughs> well, you know, some people are touch starved. It's fair. <laughs> do we have anything else we should cover? Okay. We did. We, got, we kind of touched on spirit people. We kind of touched on demons and gin. We didn't really discuss Faye much. Don't fuck with Faye. Don't, Unless you're he, Rowan and Mom. Apparently they're living their best lives doing that. No, because I refuse <laughs> to let Rowan. <laughs> that you know if about? You're, if you're wandering What do you the, think she talks to Gangi about? If you're wandering through the wilderness and you find yourself in an unusual environment that feels somehow off, do not eat or drink anything. Don't eat anything. That's how you get stuck there. It's the whole thing. It's the first time the White Queen offers you Turkish Delight, you are fucked. Turkish Delight isn't even that good, Edmund. Get your life together. <laughs> Sacrifice your whole fucking family for some mediocre Turkish Delight. C.S. Lewis, you crazy, culty bastard. I still love those <laughs> books, though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the Chronicles of Narnia. She might be. She might have been murdered by the Fae on the other end. She turned her camera off. Ate too many cupcakes. She found in the woods. I ate the crystal light meth. The crystal light meth. Crystal. Uh. Um. Yeah, you got weird shit happening to your kids. You have messaged me about it. I'll probably fix it for you. That's something we can address. Um. Yeah, I guess we kind of like skirted around that, but Kate does have a, a off-neglected side business where she does house cleansings and, and protective 
I mentioned it. I said it doesn't make me any money. Well, you mentioned it was... this episode. I didn't say it in the past. I mean, like, because you've been doing that as long as we've been doing the podcast. We bring it up almost never. This is not a podcast to promote my um, personal gains. Maybe Obviously. It <laughs> Maybe it should be. This will be the Kate Charms People's House of Podcast. I mean, I don't know people will want to hear my snarky ass and then have me come, like, sweet out. I, I guess like, that was that was the original point of that, wasn't it? That we weren't going to mix. <laughs> <laughs> because I do, although I take nothing seriously on this show, I um, do take it seriously when I am actually addressing those those issues. <laughs> I think what it breaks down to in most paranormal issues really have to worry about it just kind of parasitic and you know it can escalate from there but that's the first thing you have to worry about just a reminder clean your fucking house let's start with that clean your house and use your rooms places that are neglected where no one goes that are filth pots that's what these things like they can hide there ah shit (laughs) yeah Yeah, sorry (laughs) Mel. Dude, I'm one person with a three-bedroom house. I have rooms that I haven't gone into in six months, which is not literally true because I was just redoing two of the rooms that I neglect, but seriously. Find some time, go in there once every week or two, dust around, kind of kind of visualize clearing out the, the dust and the staleness and the stagnancy, getting fresh air and energy and life through the Silence for Mel. She's like, fuck it, I'm not doing it! Don't want to go in that room. I just assume that some kind of wolf be carrying her up. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, most of... Most I heard Wolf Beast of Karen. I said Wolf Beast carried you off. <laughs> but the Wolf Beast of Karen would be... Uh, which we, <laughs> A movie we'll produce if you subscribe to our Patreon. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the Wolf Beast of Karen should be like a supervillain. I don't know about... We can make that into a horror film. We can sell that That's shutter. why she's so mean to people. It's the wolf beast. <laughs> Not just her sexual frustration. Karen is too old to be having her... Uh, so yeah. Keep your house clean. Keep everything around you fresh. And, That's and legitimately number number one. Really um, is. It really is. Um, keep, keep everything around you flowing and in motion. Like... And when you clean your house, do it with purpose. Like, I, if you, I don't know if anyone wants, I can give you some recipes for some, like, sprays or, you know, washes you can use in your house to not only cleanse them physically, but cleanse them energetically. It's not hard to do it all at the same time. Slime and algae doesn't grow in a running river. Like, keep that shit moving. If you have something horrific happen in your house if you have death disease abuse those things you're going to have to work past but a general person's normal life normal grandma got a cold but she's fine now the kids made a mess like that can be cleaned up easily night terrors feeling watched seeing things out of the corner of your eyes those are the kinds of things you might want to talk to someone that is, you know, professional about. Sometimes they're benign, if you, especially like things out of the corner. You know, like that could just yeah. be something that's trying to share your space and trying to stay out of your way. Your peripheral vision is actually designed in, uh, to pick up motion, and you, while your interior vision is designed to focus on details. So that's why it's likely you'll see something moving in the peripheral more so than you'll see it moving right in front of you. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to summarize some things here. I had a thought, and then it was gone, and I'm trying to find it. It seemed sort of important. Was it about tacos? <laughs> I do love tacos, but I don't think that's what it was about. Keep yourself calm. Don't overreact to shit. If you feel your, your hackles rising and you're starting to get angry or depressed, find a way out of it. Like, go for a walk. Go do something to change your own personal mood. Like, like I said, that's these things, kibbles and bits. Like, you gotta uh, starve them out sometimes. Like a like a overgrowth of bacteria. Exactly. I have no idea what makes me happy. <laughs> Let's find something. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> I don't know if I can get Jensen Ackles to your house, but I'll do my best. Mm. I am going to the symphony this weekend, which I'm excited about. I almost yeah. never go out on things. 
I mean, it's been a hard couple of years to... It really has. There's going to be a lot of people after being locked inside and having to, you know, people are just, everyone right now is just angry with the world, and they're taking it out on each other for a lot of the parts, and that's, you know, it's not good for anyone, but if, if you just got to... You got to keep yourself calm and, and help yourself rise above it because nobody's having any good time right now. <sighs> True. Try to that. try to take your you know find your little victories and take them where you can. Get a cat. Don't get upset if you're not having as many victories as you want. So. Just get a cat. Get all the cats. Not all the cats. Once you have too many cats, that becomes a whole different thing. Right? I, I already have, like, a spinster, spinster complex, so let's... <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with dogs. Okay. Cats are just better at uh, keeping away negative energy with more. Oh. Um, I thought with it. Aren't they, like, sources of, like, evil or soullessness? <laughs> no, it's just... It's- I think cats see through the veil a bit better than dogs do. Um, I mean, dogs do have a bit of perception. They, they do have a bit of ability to see through the veil, but I think cats see through it better. And they also have a little bit better sense of like running it off than dogs do. Like a dog will get protective, but a dog will usually a dog will default for you to try to take care of a problem like that rather than try to do it themselves, whereas a cat might yeah. be a little bit more proactive. Because <laughs> in a dog situation, you're the alpha. Whereas a cat will say, fuck that, this is my house, let's get this thing out of here, I don't want to see the gate for Not always. I'm, go- I'm going to attack it, and then I'm going to leave it for you with its guts out. That's right. Mm. I'll, show you how- I'll show you how to hunt. You ain't doing it right. I'm going to show you how much I love you. Because <laughs> you can't fucking fix it yourself. Uh, any other last summarizations we have before we move on to our drink? And we'll drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and fight. Fight. <laughs> fight. <laughs> nope. Alright, what do you got for a drink, Kate? We'll think of something after we hang up and go, oh yeah, we should talk about this. Probably. Um, so, my thought for a drink for this was to festively bring a little protection into your life. What better way to do that without a cocktail than like, come on, let's be honest. We're gonna we're gonna work some protection magic into our drinking today. Okay. Ooh. Take note. So we're um, <laughs> that's fine. Shh, let them take notes. It makes them feel important. Okay, sorry. All yeah, two of them. So uh, you know, there's there's plenty of plants in the world that are used I mean all plants have a magical there are plenty of plants in the world there's there are some plants in the world I just turned into Theo <laughs> uh, so there's you know plants all have their magical properties there are quite a few that offer us protection so we're gonna work some of those into a drink and honestly the ones that seem the most appealing to me today we're in the savory family so we're gonna do essentially a bloody mary we're gonna have vodka I told you I don't fuck around with mirrors. I always said it to a camera. So we are Is going a to a mirror. No, it's untrustworthy, but it's not the same thing. <laughs> so gonna do a Bloody Mary. I am. See, going... that's it. That's mirrors. What we should have talked about. Moving on, Bloody Mary. We can go back to that, but I'm going to do a Bloody Mary that instead of being heavy on the heat is going to be heavy on the garlic and rosemary because those are both great for keeping away negative energy entities. Tomatoes also good at keeping away negative spirits. They're good for protection. Ask Dewey. That corgi gets sprayed by skunks more than anything I've ever seen in the world. Short and get out of the way. Well, and he thinks they're all that that one skunk he was friends with that didn't spray him. (laughs) We're going to add some fresh lime juice, which is also a good protection, good for protection and grounding. You get to rim a Bloody Mary in salt, which we all know is good for protection. It's super good. I mean, I think that's why we all know it, but... I haven't mentioned it once. And Hocus Pocus, I forgot that there is a part in Hocus Pocus where she surrounds herself in a circle of salt. Oh, yeah. Salt's important. So, yeah, I'll give you guys some details, but we're going to do a, basically a rosemary and garlic-based Bloody Mary. Vampire 
We're going to do a vampire repelling Bloody Mary. And it's going to be fucking delicious, by the way, because I make some great Bloody Marys. There will be other things involved. I think uh, I haven't. I've only ever had one. You didn't you didn't taste them when I was drinking them one time when you guys came for lunch? Probably not, because the only time I ever had one, it was gross. Because, <laughs> you know, of course you didn't taste it, because... No, because you had the op- spot and optimizer. Spot and optimizer. And, <laughs> and I'll step over my own mother for a So, yeah, I haven't... I'm sure I'll still throw a little Worcestershire, probably a little hot sauce. I like a splash of bitters in my Bloody Mary for some complex flavor. Celery, which I don't think is a protection plant, but I think it corresponds with good luck, so that's never going to hurt anybody. Models beat it because it supposedly takes more calories to digest than it takes so it's protection of these matters. Please stop talking. <laughs> I'll be. Are you? Am I not? <laughs> Are you? Um, finish your drink. Did you finish your show? I think I finished my drink. Did you finish your show? Tequila and whiskey are also both good for protection, but I just had those. Those were the but two tequila is bad for everything else. <laughs> <laughs> tequila is great for protection. You were ready to fight a bitch after that. <laughs> I'll fight a ghost. Story. Bring me a ghost. I'll fight a ghost. <laughs> That's me and Jin. <laughs> I guess it's like a wrap up our discussion here. You want to talk about mirrors? You want to not want to talk about mirrors? Mel, do you want to talk about mirrors? I, I have nothing to add to mirrors. I I just know what Supernatural tells me about mirrors. So Don't, don't set them across from each other. Fuck mirrors. Yeah, well, if it's in a weird spot, you should probably check to see if it's double-sided. <laughs> Is that the right word? That's not the right word. You know what I mean. Uh, two-way? Two way. A two-way two way mirror. All right. Well, I think the roundtable system worked pretty good. You know, so it took us a year to get an idea. We had lots to discuss, despite the fact that nobody brought any notes to the table. I'm not saying we should do it every episode, but I'm saying it works. I got a lot of I got a lot of weird shit in my head. I don't always know what <laughs> we both do. Well, we're we're bridging into year two. Do we have an idea for the next episode, or do we just want to see what we come up with? It should be a surprise. Surprise! Don't believe it. Just watch. Like a ghost stick in your mouth? <laughs> New and improved. Booze and Spirits. Season 2. Now with 85% more ghost dicks. Extra ghost dicks. Are we going to pick a topic or do we just want to roll into the next one and see what happens? Or come up with one off the Or should we, what was our first episode? Women on Rooftop? Should we just do that one again? <laughs> I'll just start it all over again. We'll just get, we're just going to Groundhog Day this. That's right. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, um, let's, uh, isn't... think about it when can come back. Well, I guess this was supposed to be the Halloween episode? It is. Sort of. Oh, how about that? <laughs> also, our one year spookiversary. Ooh. Spooky. Spooky, scary, werewolf bar mitzvah. <laughs> no? No? No. No. You werewolf next episode? Is that what we're doing? I picked a word that you said. Yeah, but I'm gonna, like, tie it to fucking Doctor Who if we do a werewolf. Like, that's that's the only place my brain's gonna go. That makes sense. Queen Elizabeth and Doctor Who. How about Scottish ghosts? Scottish ghosts? You just want us to make spitty noises again. I, I kind of forgot about that, but that is a really, really good point. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Scottish girls? Scottish girls? We, we know. We'll just... It won't have anything to do with ghosts. We'll just talk about Karen Gillian. That's a good place to start. I'm good with Scottish ghosts. We'll just talk about Karen Gillian and Jade from Ghost Club. It's fine. I'm good with Scottish ghosts. Unless we have uh, another better, bigger, harder, faster point. Yeah. Sold. Sold. Going once. Going twice. I like cheese. <laughs> Sold the lady of my cheeks. <laughs> I like swords. <laughs> Sword chucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um. Boy, I hope that we can find some good stuff to put in our show notes because I feel like we kind of like just barely touched on a lot of things. So we can link to Michelle's website. We'll um, definitely uh... do that, and then some of her books, the other stuff. We'll just put some pictures of. Uh, 
Say like dogs? Christopher? I, I was going to say defense of the dark art teachers from all the Harry Potter movies, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, because you'll put up Snape and then I'll cry. Oh. I mean, I do have a baby with a Harry Potter middle name, and it wasn't even my idea. Albus. Oh. I didn't know that either. Well, he has two middle names. So he has no more. No, I'm just fancy, so he has two. <laughs> no, he has none, because there's two on one side and two on the other. Killian... Albus Ray. You have two middle names. You have no middle name. That's the rule. The middle name then is a space. Are they hyphenated? No. I am waiting for um, because all these people who want to hyphenate their last names to like show their blend with their family. I'm waiting for the child of a hyphenate family to marry the child of another hyphenate family, so that have four hyphens done, and it just grows from there. I'm sorry, I was not for one. If I hyphenated my last name and Sean's last name. And his first name is Killian, and he has two middle names. That is too many letters. That is too much going on. But it would be five. You would have an actual middle. And then it would be Ray, technically. Princess Angelina, Contessa, Louisa, Francesca, Banana, Fan, and the best But you can call me that. Ah, uh, okay. Hopefully we'll have some information for you in the show notes. Um, <laughs> Something. It might just... It might just be a video of us saying squirrel to Theo over and over again. You're desperate. You can find us on the <laughs> socials. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Like, we've pretty much abandoned. I mean, we haven't totally abandoned it, but we're not. Maybe someday. I'm sorry. I'm in school full time. I got a toddler. I got a side gig. You know what? I, we've I got, got a real gig. I got we this. We got 700 twi- Twitter followers, and it did fuck all for our listening leadership. So I, I think this is doesn't bother Um, yeah, so fuck our show notes, fuck our social, um, fuck our merch. (laughs) There are some new shirts on our fuck our merch, though. We do, we do have some new shirts. I was trying to figure out, I really, really wanted to put together a prosthetic sphincter one, but I haven't got the graphics together for that yet. I'm working. Anything else to say before we put, put this puppy to bed? Throw away your welcome mat. Throw away your welcome mat. Hadouken! Put welcoming people into your life. Be a curmudgeon. Move to the woods. Pick berries. Quit your job. Worship the air. Breastfeed in public like a radiant earth goddess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that one. Good try. <laughs> Asians who are not good at math. Like me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Abercrombie and Fitch lifestyle. Do Abercrombie and Fitch still exist? The one here closed down because you know, no one's shopping at the mall for a year now. I don't know. I feel like I need to draw a black card, though, just to round her out. Black card is next season of Man vs. Wild Bear Gorillas must survive in the depths of the Amazon with only Blank and his wits. My submission is the Booze of Spirits podcast. <laughs> Boom! Art? Like Art Carney? You know what, the important thing is I entertain myself. That's what a year of this podcast has been based on, is us entertaining ourselves. <laughs> um, someday Nick and I have a very exciting new Bad Decisions Club planned, but... Uh, I know we've teased this, but we haven't got our they materials yet. Like, they haven't shipped it yet, and they sent us a shipping notification on October 4th. Yeah. And this is the Halloween episode, if that tells you anything. Our, our shipping label was printed October 4th. And when I emailed them, they said, we're really busy. Fuck around and find because out. They oversold. And here's the thing. On that site, they say, oh, we only have a hundred of these to sell. So, like, that was a lie. Because they obviously sold obviously more than like that. Obviously, like, seven. And waiting for the next batch. <laughs> anyway. How's our show in? Where's my notes? I forgot. I don't know how to end the show because I closed my notes. Anyway... Something Please think responsibly that. and in accordance with your local laws. Don't become our next ghost! Boom! Got it! Ah, Nailed it! Somebody.